Just about ready at reunion. Settle in with us for a good long night. First of two semifinals, the Red Raiders and the Longhorns. And once again, a look at the Nations Bank starting lineups. Dale Austin Clemens, the player of the year in the conference. Warren Hughes for Tech. Cambridge Williams, Burdett, Tyler, and Wrencher for the favored Longhorns. Who have won 10 of 11 coming in. They are 10 and 2 since the return from NCAA suspension of Dexter Cambridge. Jim McDaniel with the center jump and the horns control. And sophomore guard B.J. Tyler will bring it up. And he'll be met by Brian Moore, the senior from San Diego. This is Wrencher. It took him three minutes to touch the ball last night against the Aggies. Right away to Benford Williams. And Bob, that could be big. He strokes his first one good. It could be huge. We talked about the fact that Williams had to really come out of the funk that he had been in. He just has not played well for quite some time. That's a good start. Backdoor cut. Allen Austin knocked out by the Longhorns. James Dickey, the conference coach of the year in his first year. On the South Plains, taking over for longtime mentor Gerald Myers and right away lighting a fire under the Red Raider program. And we talked about Benford Williams. He came into this tournament hitting only 16 of his last 54 shot attempts. That makes that basket, as you mentioned, just real big in terms of his confidence. Texas, as usual, opening in the 2 3 matchup zone. And the Red Raiders tested on the perimeter. Lance Hughes from near Austin and Georgetown knocked out again. Texas feisty defensively. And the Raiders have 23 seconds on the shot clock. Did you see how quickly they got to Lance Hughes? That's because Lance Hughes, the freshman out of Georgetown, Texas, is such an outstanding shooter. Right into the hands of B.J. Tyler. Four nothing and they slap the press on. Cambridge the point man on the press. Moore gets help from Clemens. And right back and they trap Moore. Clemens got Burdett to leave his feet and a foul. And it'll be the first one on the horns against sophomore center Albert Burdett. It really wasn't a steal. It's just a bad pass. I think Lamont Dale thought that Brian Moore was going to go the other way and B.J. Tyler just able to pick it off and go the length of the floor for the dunk. They changed their mind. They put the foul on Cambridge and not Burdett. And Will Clemens, who is the second leading scorer and rebounder and field goal shooter in the Southwest Conference this year, the fifth best free throw shooter. He met series against Texas, Bob. He matches up very well with Dexter Cambridge inside, but the mismatch comes for Texas Tech when Allen Austin has to take Albert for death. That's a that's a problem for Texas Tech and for Austin. But he's played against bigger people all year. Very strong against the Owls last night. Fleming's 26 points, nine rebounds, and he gets the Red Raiders on the board. Look for nothing but strong man-to-man -man from Tech on the defensive end. Leaner by Cambridge, taken off by the Raiders. And they run Lamont Dale to tie it at four. Well, don't expect Texas Tech to sit on the basketball. We just had a good example of that. Inside, Cambridge with his first two. His game last year not really resembling his game this year. He's strictly low post as a senior. Traveling on Lance Hughes, they turn it over. James Dickey's question right now is, why was the call made by the official across the floor? when there was an official trailing the play was right there who did not make the call. Here's another tough matchup. Hughes is skinny, 170. Powerful Benford Williams. Terrence Wrencher on the penetration draws the first Texas Tech foul of the night. And they ring it up on Lamont Dale. Such a small front line for Tech. 6'5", 6'3", 6'7". As they stand, but they play much bigger than that. They're good Terrence athletes. Winter, they get shots. up off the floor well and quickly, and they're strong. Rancher pulling Tom Pender's team out of trouble. 17 second half points last night, finished with 24, four steals. And he and Michael Richardson exploding in the second half against A&M to pull away 88 to 69 back to a four-point lead and back to the full court pressure 
Watch Bryant Moore because he did a very good job against Texas pressure in both games this year. Underneath the turnaround by Flemings, rejected by Burdett and taken right back. Lamont Dale underneath. Nice hang time. He's got four. It's a two-point game again, but right back comes Texas. Running after the made basket, Tyler with a second slam. What a great play on the baseline. He backed off a little bit with a dribble toward the sideline when the defense loosened up. Then he exploded down the base. Watch him back off. He backs off right there, and he flies by. Just goes right by Lance Hughes. At 6-1, their most prolific dunker this year. Back up by four. He's pretty fearless when he gets inside where the big guys play, too. He doesn't think about that. He just goes right to the rim. Hughes into the middle. Lemons. Back out to Brian Moore. That's good advice from Brian Moore. He looks at his club and says, now settle down a little bit. Not to get over excited, get anxious, too anxious against Texas. That's what they want. The Longhorns like that. Lemons with nice yeah. touch on the fall away has four. Not a whole lot he can't do. Just a sophomore out of Paducah. Tyler underneath to Albert Burdett. Albert Burdett. And 12 to 8, the Texas margin. Lemons up to help. Junior, not a sophomore, hands it off and. Cambridge had to get out of Moore's way to avoid his second foul. Hughes' three-pointer down to Wrencher. Red Raiders get back and foil the fast break. Cambridge against Flemings. Knocked out. Williams keeps it alive. And Tyler saves, but right to Moore. Three on one. Hughes will go to the line on Wrencher's first foul. Frencher had no choice but to go after Hughes that time. Hughes is an excellent jumper. He's a big-time dunker, and that's what he was going for. So Frencher's got to go in and prevent him from getting the ball off. Lance Hughes became a starter mid-season and was one of the hottest players in the league as the regular season team was closed. Averaged better than 19 points over his last five games, included... A career high 31. That's the fifth best freshman game in Southwest Conference history. He looks like he ought to be about a sophomore in high school, but fortunately he doesn't play like that. Underneath Cambridge. And Bob, if Texas continues to run off points like this, it could be a long night for Tech. Tyler almost with the steal, but he came down out of bounds. I'll tell you who's doing everything right now is B.J. Tyler. He's dunked the ball. He's passing the ball. He's playing excellent defense. He's all over the place. He's really off to a great start. You see the Texas brain trust right there, led by the guy in the middle, Tom Penders. What about the fatigue factor for Tech finishing up about midnight last night? Any factor at all? Yes, it could be a factor. Great pass by Cambridge. Tom. Missed the jam down to Fleming. Three horns back, Moore off to Hughes. Gave the look for the three. Can't get the two, and Cambridge has it stripped by Allen Austin. Moore trying to be the settling influence. Flemons misses twice, three times, and he's fouled by Burdett. Well, I don't think that was going to turn into anything, but just in case, John Paul quickly stepping between the two. Dexter Cambridge had a great opportunity at the other end. It was showtime. However, you can't bounce it off the back of that rim. <laughs> he missed a real opportunity. He'll be talking to himself for the next couple of minutes. But you got to go after it like that. That's the right thing to do. We welcome our viewers tuning in on Prime Network and the nationwide family at Prime's Regional Sports Cable Networks. Clemens knocked down 10 of 11 free throws last night and his first three tonight. As we've talked about before with Will Flemings, he's just a, a very sound, fundamental free throw shooter. From his feet all the way to the extension and follow through, when the ball comes off his fingertips, he does everything correctly. He's got six quick points to keep Peck in this one. 14 to 12 horns with 15 39 in the first half. A nation's people are a nation's strength. 
and the strength of a bank called Nations Bank, a bank that now has the resources and the locations to reach one out of every four people in the nation, a bank that measures its success with the success of every community it serves, from Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that sees its strength in the neighborhoods of a nation would today be called Nations Bank. The smoothest dude I know is a smooth operator. Everyone else is just an imitator. My man has great taste through and through. He knows a quality brew, and I do too. Schlitz malt liquor bull. Yeah, he's brave like a gladiator, smoking like a radiator, chill like a refrigerator, warm a lady's heart like an incubator. Nobody does it like a smooth operator. No one does it like the bull. Word, Schlitz malt liquor bull. Pizza Hut delivery for the Supreme Pizza loaded with six delicious toppings. Get a Supreme for $7.99 and any other pizza for just four bucks more. Texas wants to take over Arkansas's traditional role of dominance in this tournament. And speaking of Arkansas, you should have heard the cheer when their score from the SEC semifinals in Birmingham, Alabama was announced not that long ago. A, a standing ovation <laughs> with Alabama's upset on a late three-pointer with less than two seconds to go. They beat Arkansas in that semifinal by one. 90 to 89, and so uh, Nolan and company strolling back to Fayetteville. Losers in round two in the SEC. Texas ball up by two. 15 and a half minutes in the first half. Look at Lamont Dale on Wrencher. He guards, always guards the best offensive player the opponent has. He'll guard a big guy inside. Lamont Dale will, a guard. He doesn't care. And James Dickey doesn't care. Williams fouled by Moore, who thought he had the clean steal. I thought he had it, too. I mean, you talk about some quick hands. Looked like a pretty good defensive play right there. Foul by Ryan Moore. He's first. Came in tonight foul. needing two to tie the Tech single season record. That's said by Sean Gay in 86. You see a wide-eyed James Dickey there. <laughs> he looked a little bit alert. Knocked out by Hughes. Your attention, please. Texas ball. Yeah, he's into it. How's he look so fresh? We know he didn't get that much sleep. He looks in pretty good shape. Long time Eddie Sutton assistant with him. Eight years in Arkansas. Kentucky. Wrencher from the corner. First field goal, fourth point, and the margin is four again. Well, I'll tell you, Texas Tech really looking to get the ball to Brian Moore. Whoever gets it, the guy they look for first is the guy with the ball right now. And Hughes, for a moment, broke free, and then Burdett got there, but Hughes still able to score. Texas Tech right now doing a better job of getting back on defense. That transition defense becomes essential when you play against the Texas Longhorns. Off balance, it works like an air ball. I think it was meant to be a shot, but Cambridge wanted it to be an alley-oop. Lost it one way or the other. Off Flemons, right back to Texas. And the matchup to watch inside is Flemons keeping Dexter Cambridge away from any passing angles for Texas. The guard's having a hard time spotting him. That is, a, that's an excellent matchup inside between those two guys. There, they just switched that time. And Dexter off a season low, 10 points last night. Missing here. Raiders just down two. Six minutes gone of the game. Allen Austin's air ball right into the hands of Benford Williams. And Tyler with the three. You have to take away. Oh, there's a bad pass inbounds. Put in by Williams, and that's so awesome this year the makings of a Texas run the lead jumps to seven in a matter of seconds and you can always find a three-point shot in there too that they make they'll shoot shoot it at the end of transition will Flemons eight protect out of their total of 16 long pass and Cambridge is fouled
You talk about being quick with the offensive pressure. Every possession seems to be an opportunity possession for Texas. You score, they get it out of bounds, inbounds, and they're down the floor right now. I mean, that 24-second clock, you might as well turn it off in this game. <laughs> We're not going to need it. Chad Collins checking in. He's a true freshman out of San Antonio, MacArthur. Let's make that a 45-second clock, not a 24-second clock. <laughs> but you could use a 24-second clock is, usually. That's exactly right. In Texas plays, no three-point play for Cambridge, 23-16. Collins in there for Noah, freshman replacing a senior at point guard. And Collins immediately with the trap to deal with, does so nicely. Coaching staff really spending a lot of time with Brian Moore on the bench, just trying to calm him down a little bit. Hughes passed up to three. Dale didn't. And Cambridge brings it down. In the Pac-10, UCLA over Arizona State. Wrencher, soft touch off the glass. Wooden fall. Williams stepped out before he could save it. Well, we have a moment here. Our best wishes for a quick recovery for longtime Texas, Texas Sports Texas Information Texas Director Bill Little, who had bypass surgery in Austin this week, and uh, as we understand it, doing great, which is the best of all possible news. And we wish you were here, Bill. Yeah, that is great news. Somehow this Southwest Conference postseason classic isn't the same without Bill Little, but he'll be back next year. We wish you well, Bill. We hope you're watching. Take care of yourself. Our best to his wife, Kim, too. You hang in there. Stolen wrencher, Williams with a head of steam. James Dickey says that's enough. I've seen enough. Let's take a time out. We're going to talk about it. Benford Williams. You talk about a head of steam. If he'd hit the board, he'd have gone right through it. A great dunk. He was really up in the air. Big Ben striking with 12-26 in the first half to open up a nine-point Longhorn lead. Reintroducing a glorious name for a glorious new automobile, the 1992 Buick Roadmaster. With its powerful V8 performance and the security of its driver's airbag, anti-lock brakes, and full perimeter frame, Roadmaster is perhaps the best value in an American luxury sedan. Roadmaster also delivers something only a Buick can deliver, Buick quality. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sport Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sport Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. You gotta be kidding. What's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't tell me good taste, I know I taste good. While the best things are always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a doctor pepper. We want it. Oh, just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it. Transportation arranged through General Rent a Car, where we're going all out for you no matter where you're going, with fast, friendly service and great low rates nationwide. Daughter of Texas coach Tom Penders has to be happy, and the, the demise of Benford Williams apparently greatly exaggerated. He has gotten it all back together in this first half. Well, he's hit a shot outside, he's played well in transition, he just had a great dunk. So he's off to a pretty good start. I think Texas is off to a good start. Tech has been somewhat hesitant. Uh, they haven't looked as confident as I thought they might look. A little hesitant with the pass and a little hesitant with some of the open shots that they've had. He was fouled by Lamont Dale and Williams completes the three point play. The Texas run to open up a 10 point lead at 26 to 16. 
With about eight minutes gone in our first semifinal tonight, and Collins in a world of trouble, finally bailed out by Fleming. Texas changed the pressure that time with Dexter Cambridge on the bench. They went 2-2-1 instead of 1-2-1-1. And it's a straight matchup zone here. That guard's passing up a ton of threes. Hughes on the scoop. Has six and tries to help Clemens as much as he can. You realize how tough shot that what a tough shot that was? My goodness. Tyler got Hughes to back off, and that's two threes in a row for BJ. He feels it. You can tell it. His last seven conference games from three-point land hit 60%. He felt it ever since Cambridge came back. The three-point shot opened up again when Cambridge gave him the low post presence. Austin, not there. Burdett lost the rebound to Clemens. Oh, well, Clemens had a pretty good shot. Lane in there. You see, that's that's when you can tell that the club's become very hesitant. Clemens was inside the free throw line, had a jump shot. They took it all the way out front. Skip pass over to Dale. Now Collins again. Passed up to three. Wrencher strips him. Here comes Tyler. Hughes to beat, and he can't do it. Short on the backhand for BJ. I don't think Wrencher ever left the floor, and he deflected that pass when Collins went inside. Really quick hand. Hughes outside. Collins with a toe on the line for two. 37% shooter during the regular season and reluctant to squeeze it off so far here who replaces Moore at the tech point. Michael Richardson, second half hero yesterday in for Texas. And the strip by Dale right to Tyler. I'll tell you, Lamont Dale is one of the finest competitors in this league. He really plays hard night in and night out. In and out for Tyler. Trying to settle it down here. Stop the bleeding. Halfway mark of the first half. See, now he's hesitant. Allen Austin doesn't want to take that shot. That shot is there. Everybody passing up a lot of open shots. That, it tells you about the hesitancy that, that they're experiencing. They're conscious of that pressure. I'll tell you what else they're conscious of. It's affecting their offense, getting back on defense. They got back, and Tyler misses another layup, but he was fouled. But that is part of Tom Penner's approach. Uh, part of his philosophical Foul approach is that we're going to make you so conscious of getting back on defense and the fact that we're going to attack with offensive pressure that we're going to disrupt your concentration at, at your offensive end of the floor. Now goes Collins after he commits the foul. Moore back in. Texas returning Cambridge and Albert Burdett to the sideline. B.J. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler transferring from DePaul. What do you think their thoughts on losing him are based on his sophomore year in Texas? Well, he's one heck of a basketball player. He played at DePaul as a freshman. DePaul rich in basketball tradition. And I'll tell you, I bet he's glad to be back in that warm weather. He reads the weather report every day and says, well, I'm glad to be at the University of Texas. So is that man. That's 12 for Tyler. An 11-point Texas lead, their biggest so far. Tony Watson replacing Tyler, who gets the nice hand. So Pender's into his guard depth now with Watson and Richardson in the three-guard look along with Richard. Williams and Cambridge, the only up-front people. See, it appears that Tech is more concerned with the pressure than they are with the bucket. And that's what you cannot do. You attack the basket, not the press. Stacy Bailey off the Tech bench. Moore with the three-point miss, taken down by Clemens and fouled. And that will be two on Cambridge. Yeah, I thought that Will Clemens might have pushed first with his other arm. Cambridge Looked like he was pushing with his left arm, but, <laughs> but he comes away with a ball. He's a pretty effective inside player. You see Flemings right there battling with Albert Burdett and with Dexter Cambridge. It was Cambridge number 30 in there. Yeah, it could have it could have gone the other way. Williams out on Bailey. If Tech gets the streak going, he's the tight player who can ignite it. 
And a big three-pointer as they opened up the lead over Rice in the second half last night. Clemens inside, 10 points. Real clever move. A lot of traffic in there. Tony Watson among the most improved players in the country this year. He stripped Bailey off to Moore. And a chance for Tech to cut it down to 7. 8-20 in the first half. Winner plays the TCU Houston winner tonight's second semifinal at 1.30 in the conference championship game tomorrow afternoon. Venture out on Bailey in the corner. Austin looks down, finds Clemens, air ball, Richardson right there. Texas fans let you know when you don't draw iron. <laughs> Texas now showing the patience as the Raiders sagging defensively. Richardson traveled. And a timeout with seven minutes and 40 seconds in the first half. All Texas so far, they lead 31 to 22. It's here, Domino's new better tasting pizza. Tastier crust. From this day on, every Domino's pizza is going to be better than ever. Nobody knows. Like Domino's, how you like? More melted cheese. This is a toppy. Tender, tastier crust. Try a medium with unlimited toppings, now just $9.99. Another's $4 more. The testing lasted two years and yielded gasolines that are clearly advanced. Exxon offers you phase four. Gasolines that give you the highest level of engine cleaning in every unleaded grade for smooth acceleration and maximum performance. For a cleaner engine and high performance, rely on Phase 4 from Exxon. Because Southwest Airlines has more flights a day than other airlines, if you miss one, you can probably catch the next one. Or the next one or the next one. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. Because most of Southwest Airlines flights are short, we serve snacks, which saves you money because you don't pay for an airline meal or anything associated with an airline meal. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. Bob, all year, one of the things that has really caught people's eye in Lubbock is the ability of James Dickey to coach without getting down on his players too much and in a position right now where he really needs to pump them back up. They've lost some confidence since that place is wrong. Well, I think one of James Dickey's strengths is, is the ability to relate properly to the players and when, when you can do that, you can do a lot of things with them but they are down a little bit right now. But I hate to keep using the same word, but they've become very hesitant at the offensive end of the floor. You can't play Texas that way because they thrive on that. See, those shots, you got to take those, right? That's it. That's what you have to do. You notice the attack was not against the pressure that time. It was against the basket. Go to the bucket. That doesn't mean you have to drive all the way, but that's what you, your thought process is. That's, that's easier to say than it is to do against a pressing team like Texas, but that's what you have to do. Cambridge missing off the spin. And Tech ball down seven. They have cut it slowly but surely to a manageable margin. And Lamont Dale that's missing better. from the corner. Austin and Williams in the battle for the rebound. And the foul is on Allen Austin, his second. Stay tuned for halftime when Bob and I will be giving you this week's Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest question. Albert Burdett back in. Texas getting bigger. Richardson to the bench. I see the last two possessions. Tech's been very aggressive. Dale went to the basket and scored. That time he had a good shot. Austin went to the board like he should. He committed a foul, but he went to the board hard. Williams straight in. They continue to feed Cambridge, and he continues to miss inside eight feet. And he commits his third personal after this miss. I tell you, he's closer than eight feet. He's 
setting a pretty deep post in there. He's not upset at the official. He's upset at himself for missing such a tight shot. So right back in is Richardson. Pender said after last night when Cambridge sat for the final 13 minutes and 43 seconds, he will be rested. Well, he's still rested because <laughs> foul trouble probably keeping him out for the last seven minutes almost of this first half. Bit of an adjustment by Texas. That was a nice pass down low. Great Burdett job defensively, oh, although Austin. Austin got the putback. Burdett making Clemens miss point blank. And the Raiders have crept back within five. Tyler Strip Richardson alertly pounces on it. Now, one of the things to notice is that since the timeout, Dickey had a chance to talk to his team. They've been very aggressive at the offensive end of the floor. They've come away with two baskets. The other time they were called for a Another good defensive play right now. So it tells you that Dickey has an impact on the game with his players. Watson called for the foul after he fumbled it away. And Texas again with the three guard look of Tyler Richardson and Wrencher Bailey launches the three had a big one last night and Stacy Bailey makes this a two point game. That's one heck of a comeback against a good team. The Raiders really did a nice job coming back. Wrencher ends a 9 0 Texas Tech spurt. How many times this year have we seen Terrence Wrencher just stymie an opponent's run or settle a game back down for Texas or get the big basket, big steal, or big pass. Anytime they've needed it, it has never looked like a freshman. He's something else. He's just a great player. Brad Dale is in, throws up the air ball. Flemons not quite able to save it. Today's game is brought to you by Exxon Gasoline. And by Kubota Tractor Corporation. 523 in counting in the first half. Tyler all the way in, can't finish with the lefty jumper. And 33 29, the Texas lead. That's where you want to go. That's a better job offensively. Texas up by as many as 11, nine unanswered Red Raider points. Take care of that. Burdett knocks it out. Albert Burdett, an excellent inside defensive player, a very fine shot blocker, a good rebounder, and he will be one of the leading scorers in the Southwest Conference next year. You just watch. He'll be a real inside threat. Lamont Dale, great leaper, knocked out by Brad right back to Lamont. And the open three there for Bailey, halfway down, and Richardson controls. Texas fans a little restless, want to see the lead built back up. It's Wrencher. What a feed to Burdett. Off of the jump stop, great execution by Wrencher of the jump stop, and then he makes the pass. Brad Dale, short range, too much. Flemons with the putback. A dozen for Will Flemons. Tyler, breakneck drive, and he draws the blocking foul on Brad Dale. The over sophomore from Amarillo. Mainly a defensive off the bench time for James Dickey. Watch this again. Terrence Wrencher gets inside the defense. You see the jump stop, and then he knows where Albert Burdett is. That's great court awareness. Really an alert play by Wrencher and a fine pass. Burdett with the big dunk. And Hughes back in for Tech. Some guards with futures on the floor right now. Tyler is off and over. Wrencher a freshman. Hughes a freshman. Penders Without has, a uh, Penders has Watson back for a couple more years. Richardson back next year. And he loves to have good guards. He's had them for many years. Great effort. I'll tell you, Richardson with just a, a great effort. He almost came away with an outstanding steal. Benford Williams not playing the point on that 1 2 1 1 pressure. That's the spot normally occupied, of course, by Cambridge. Tech now with Moore losing it way up out of his hands, and they say Richardson made contact. In the Pac 10 this evening. 
UCLA still hanging on to the eight point lead over Arizona State. One of the few conferences without a postseason tournament, the Pac 10. Skip pass over to Hughes. The look anticipated by Benford Williams. He got there in time to front Lamont Dale. They'll have a timeout with 3.51 to play in the first half with the 37 31 Texas lead. Identified ship, sir. Yeah. I hear music. People laughing. Sounds like a tango, man. Merengue. Norwegian Cruise Line. Mambo. Special fares are now available. I like that. Call your travel agent today. Wow. Let's get permission to come aboard, sir. To fight the effects of corrosion, the body of the Buick Regal has been built with two-side galvanized steel that goes beyond what most car makers use, beyond Honda, beyond Toyota. In fact, all Buicks are warranted against outer body rust through for six years or 100,000 miles. And that's a promise you don't have to take with a grain of salt. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should, too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Stores, like Tough Flare AstroTurf Doormats for just $5.99 each. They have a slip-resistant packing and are easy to clean, too. In March, they're just $5.99 each while supplies last. They're just one of the terrific specials at True Value, the neighborhood hardware stores with national buying power. I'll take the special. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated. It is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is forbidden. Dave Barnett and Bob Ortigal with 3.51 to play in the first half of our first semi. Texas is led by as many as 11, and Pat Foster and the Houston Cougars preparing to take on Mo Ibis TCU Horn Frogs in tonight's second semifinal. That will follow this game by about a half hour or so. We won't go anywhere. We hope you are with us for the duration to figure out who plays in tomorrow afternoon's finals matchup. Big edge from the field for Texas. From the line, Tech a perfect six of six. And Texas seven for eight. Three and a half minutes in the half. Five on the shot clock. Not sure if the Raiders are aware. Now Bailey knows, and he just does get it off in time. Big Great basket. job of playing possum, Bob. If they did know it was coming <laughs> down, they sure faked Texas out. Bailey is capable of coming off that tech bench and really putting some points on the board quickly. He's a good shooter. Wrencher, double clutch leaner. They spread the floor, they opened it up, give the ball to Wrencher and let him go one on one. He can do it, Tyler can do it. Long pass is too long. Dale with the save to Burdett. And the Texas press forces another turnover. But they return the favor, Moore getting the steal. We'll select the Southwest Airlines player of the game at the conclusion of the telecast. Tech by cutting the 11 point lead to six with the pace their way for the last four or five minutes. Three pointer by Moore, rebound off Dale to Flemons. And a reach in foul on Richardson. Tom Pender's not happy with that call at all. Richardson gets it. You see, Tom Penders thought Lamont Dale was over Richardson's back first, but the foul ended up being called against Richardson. Dale will go to the line. Tech continues to hang in there. Dale out of Snow Hill, Maryland, the Raiders' second leading scorer, just under 11 points per game. 
Way off on the front end of the one and one. Both teams in the bonus, 2.15 in the half. Richardson really lighting it up in the second half last night. 18 points in 12 minutes after halftime, and Brencher gets the scoop. Oh, I think the Texas Tech got a bad shake there. That looked to me like that was offensive basket interference. Once again, you had Brencher who made a brilliant back cut. And Tyler with the steal. Gets the blocking foul. But he went in with enough force that Brian Moore had to feel good about his chances of drawing a charge. Well, B.J. Tyler was thinking about the dunk. He was going up for the dunk. Brian Moore was there. Got called for a blocking foul. He was moving in after B.J. Tyler had left the floor. Foul on Moore is his second. Moore tried. The only man in foul trouble right now is Cambridge, who has played DJ not all that much times. in the first half. He's on the bench for three for Texas. Tom Pender's talking to Cambridge again right now. Standing right, smack in front of him. He was talking to him. He's walking away from him now. Well, I think he knows that Cambridge will be there in the NCAAs. The guy he was worried about was Williams because they've got all kinds of aspirations this year. Two years ago, an Elite 18. They think they're better this year, but they're not so sure they're better unless Williams continues to crawl out of his hole. He, he seems to have done so this half. Yeah, he looks like he's making some progress in that direction. Stacy Bailey fouled by Wrencher. Well, but now you're gonna count, you're gonna count getting goaltending on that? If it, not even close, I guess. Dickey's not asking for that. Wrencher. Is second the eighth team foul. That is two on Wrencher, the eighth team foul. Tony Watson. Tony Watson for Texas in four. Terrence Wrencher. And Bailey. Bailey two at the shots. line. One of the better free throw shooting Raiders. At 70% for the year. Sixth first half point for the senior out of Oakland. This is the point in the game where Texas is always strong. The last couple of minutes of the first half. They like to see if they can increase lead, and get those little mini runs before halftime comes along. Texas Tech will have to try and stymie that, see to it that that does not happen. Oh, yeah, Burdett on the back door, and Tyler never looked at See, they're playing that the offense the right side now, trying to get inside just like that. Now, just for Richardson and the three point opportunity. There's Tom Penders right there. You can see coming right at the camera. There's a good look at what happened. In fact, he lands right in, <laughs> virtually lands in Tommy Tate's lap down there. You notice how quickly he popped up, that being the case. <laughs> Richardson Michael Richardson transferred from Western Texas Junior College. And uh, four times this year, a point a minute man off Texas's bench with as many as 20. Almost matching their career high of 18. Yesterday comes up with the steal. Four on two. If they hurry, Richardson by himself. They have regained the 11 point lead in the final minute of the half. Stacy Bailey, air ball on the three pointer. Flemons hammered on the attempted follow. That's what Texas likes to do late in the ball game. They increase that pressure. They wait for that opportunity. They like to come up with a ball late. There's a bad pass by Lance Hughes over the top of the zone. Richardson with the ball. He keeps it. Looks like he's going to go in with the right hand, but he adjusts. Look at there. Using the left hand way up in the air. It's a great shot. Camera shot, that is, and not a bad shot by Richardson. They call a foul on Watson in his second. Will Clemens about to get another double-double. It will be his 16th this year, 28th of his career. Tech missing a couple of front ends of one and ones. Texas will pull him out now. They'll want to open up the middle. You see that the middle of the floor is wide open. If B.J. Tyler can get down there, he'll go down there. Difference of about four seconds on the two clocks, 23 on the shot clock, and right at 27 remaining in the half. So 
Apex should be able to get it back. Shot clock down to 12, and Tyler ready to go to work. Richardson back to B.J. Tyler. Shot clock at two. No problem. Three seconds for Brian Moore. He's got to cut it loose. Not in time. And the finishing rush for Penders and the Horns as they open up their biggest lead of the game. 48 to 35. Outstanding performance, I thought, defensively by the Longhorns. They did a good job. They really caused Tech to become very, very hesitant at the offensive end of the floor, and that hesitancy kept resulting in opportunistic possessions for the Texas Longhorns today. Texas closes with an 11-2 run, and they're up 48-35. Southwest Conference Basketball is brought to you by Buick. By Norwegian Cruise Line. By True Value Hardware. By Schlitz Malt Liquor. And by Domino's Pizza. If you call Domino's now, you'll be enjoying our new better than ever pizza during the second half. Texas by 13, B.J. Tyler with 17, Wrencher with 10, leading the assault for Texas. Will Flemons, the only Red Raider in double figures, with 12 for the Red Raiders. Southwest Airlines Friends Fly Free Sale again. Wake up and smell the coffee. And people are friendlier than ever. Just make reservations at least a day in advance and buy your round trip ticket at our regular low unrestricted fare and a friend flies with you free. And now fly through May 21st. Yo, Dad, what do you think? I've been, neighbor old buddy. I'm driving. Southwest Airlines Friends Fly Free Sale because a friend in need is, well, a friend in need. A nation's business is a nation's strength. And the strength of a bank called Nations Bank, a bank that now has over 2,000 locations to provide even the smallest business access to the largest resources. A bank that measures its strength by the strength of every business it serves, from Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that grew strong with the nation's business would today be called Nations Bank. Let's meet today's Raycom Southwest Conference classroom champion. Uh, well, my parents were a main influence. Uh, they always wanted me to do good in academics in case I didn't make it to college on an athletic scholarship that I maybe could uh, fall back on an uh, academic scholarship or get some of that nature. But they always wanted me to do good, so I had to study hard in high school. Plus, and that helped in high school and on to college. I'm going to try to uh, be a physical therapist when I graduate from college. Uh, I know a lot about it because my father's one, so and I, I enjoy what he does. And I believe that I, I think I'll enjoy that when I get out. The fundamental strength of the University of Texas at Austin is the quality of its students. They are committed to learning, unafraid to ask difficult questions, unwilling to settle for easy answers. From freshman classes to graduate seminars, students find the resources to excel, nurtured by world-renowned faculty. In a rigorous intellectual environment, students broaden their understanding of the world. Students contribute to building one of the nation's most dynamic campuses, the University of Texas at Austin. 
I've always been interested in science, biology, chemistry, physics. They were all fascinating. In college, I discovered ways to apply the pure sciences to medicine, exploring new ways to help the body repair itself. The Texas Tech Health Sciences Center has introduced me to a whole new world of opportunity. Half time of our first semifinal, Texas 48 to 35 over Texas Tech. Dave Barnett back with you again. We said uh, from the start that runs would prove to be the undoing of Texas Tech if they allowed them. One thing that really fueled the early run for the Longhorns, a slam coming up from Benford Williams. Williams gets out front. He really gets up in the air. He elevates extremely well anyway. That's a big time dunk right there. B.J. Tyler came up with the ball at the other end of the floor. Texas early with an 11 point lead. Tech came back. But uh, Texas with the last run to open up and the margin of 13 at the half. This is going to be Wrencher with the prettiest pass of the half and Burdett to finish it off. Burdett did a good job sliding the baseline once Wrencher got inside the Tech defense and Wrencher with great court awareness found the open man. And congratulations again to Wesley Dodson. Will Flemons for Texas Tech, the only consistent offense in the first half. He always works the board hard. You see the big guy inside, thought by many to be the best player in the Southwest Conference. He gets it back up on the glass. And then uh, finally for Texas, Michael Richardson had some help if he needed it. He didn't need it. <laughs> Richardson, watch him get up in the air. Great performance by him last night and help off a bench here tonight against Texas Tech. He's just had a really fine tournament so far. Texas right where they want to be, 48-35 at halftime. We'll have more halftime activities when we come back to reunion in a moment. with four-wheel steering from Kubota. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor for the best shave a man can get. They won't work in this heat. They say no AC, no show. Say you need something set overnight. Those prima donnas. There are a few companies you can call. The part's on its way. But say you need it by 10.30 a.m., guaranteed there are two. But only one is so efficient and reliable. They get it there on time for far less. Okay. Which is why to some people, there is only one UPS. After making it on Broadway, it, huh? some of the finest entertainers around go off Broadway. They appear on Norwegian Cruise Line. No other cruise line offers such entertainment. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus... Time now for this week's Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest. Who holds the SWC record for best three-point percentage in any game? Write your answer on a postcard and mail it to Raycom SWC Trivia. P.O. Box 33367, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28233. A winner drawn at random from all correct answers received by March 20th will be awarded an exciting cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line. A reminder, you must be 18 or older to win. For those of you who entered last week, our question was, what player holds the SWC championship game record for most assists? The correct answer, Reed Geddes with 12 against Arkansas in 1984. And our lucky winner this week, 
Randy Hale of Fort Worth, who wins a cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line. It's halftime, and we'll return to Reunion Arena after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. In this world, there are two kinds of haircuts, supercuts and other cuts. The difference is our exclusive supercuts technique. Get your supercut today at any one of our convenient locations in Austin, Round Rock, and San Marcos. Don't wreck your life. Case 101, the country club, everyone's joining. And I'm a member of the country club. Country music is really hot, and nobody plays more of it than Case 101. K-A-S-E, with the music everybody's talking about. Deep in your heart, the thunder grows. See the love before. Don't rock the jukebox. Case 101, listen all day. Turn on 100.7 Case 101. The music says it all. Texas by 13 at halftime. And now let's check the Dr. Pepper Roundup for scores of other games and tournament action around the country. And uh, we will begin with a look at the Big East. It was Syracuse over Seton Hall, Georgetown over St. John's, and it'll be the Orangemen and the Hoyas in the finals tomorrow. ACC, North Carolina, and Duke advancing to the finals. And as we take a look at the Big Eight, it's Kansas coming away with a victory. Oklahoma State over Iowa State at halftime. Southern Mississippi, UNC, Charlotte are tied in its Tulane and VCU in the late game tonight. In the SEC in Birmingham, the finals match up Kentucky and Alabama, which upset Arkansas on a late three-pointer. Big Ten scores from this afternoon, Michigan over Illinois. Ohio State blows away Minnesota. The Naismith Award is given annually to the nation's top college basketball player. And here's some of this year's contenders. We'll keep you updated on the top Naismith candidates throughout the season. And you can watch the Naismith Awards April 5th here on Raycon. Now look at a previous Naismith Award winner. Domino's Pizza presents Naismith Award winners. Wherever Ralph Sampson goes, people notice, especially on the court. Who wouldn't notice a 7-foot, 4-inch center who could sink 15-footers with ease or fill the lane on a fast break and finish it or routinely freeze out the best scorers in the NCAA? At the University of Virginia, Sampson was Goliath, keeping the Cavaliers in the top 10 of both polls for 49 straight weeks and winning the Naismith Award in 1981, 82, and 83. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them about quality. One of the reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. There is a gasoline that is clearly advanced. A gasoline that will give you the highest level of engine cleaning for high performance. A gasoline formulated to clean fuel injectors and intake valves. Who has this gasoline? You know who. Phase 4 gasoline from Exxon. For cleaner engines and high performance. Larry Zonka, three straight Super Bowls. After that, he went to see sports personalities, as well as our own team of sports instructors, help host Norwegian Cruise Line cruises. No other cruise line has such an all-star lineup. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus, contact with someone like number 39, 
Larry Zonka. Out of order. Stairs. Oh. oh. You know what I could use? A diet doctor. Pepper! Yes! Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, there's no stopping the taste. With 100% Nutrisweet. Hey. By popular demand, for a short time, $3.99 continues. The $3.99 all-you-can-eat, that is, of everything we've got. Like all your favorite entrees, vegetables, salads, and desserts. All you can eat for just $3.99 at lunch, $4.99 at dinner, and all day Saturday. But don't wait too long to dine. Our special price is for a limited time. That's why we call this all-you-can-eat the short time $3.99. Only at Furs Cafeterias. Because it's here today and gone Southwest Conference Basketball is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. By Ford and your Ford dealer. By True Value Hardware. By AT&T. By Miller Lite. And by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's now for our new pizza with more melted cheese, big better toppings, and a tender, tastier crust. Let's take a look at our Gillette halftime stats. Only one really means anything, and that's at the top. 59% shooting for Texas, 38% shooting for Texas Tech. Uh, Texas really was able to capitalize on that late first half run that they had. They had one midway through the first half, and then one late in the first half at a time when they like to do it. Tech doing a pretty good job on the boards, as you can see there. They've got 20 rebounds to 14 for Texas, but Tom Penders will trade that because of that 59% shooting. Many of those coming in transition. Tech ball to start the second half, and the alley-oop goes to Clemens. Texas was ready. Back out to Moore. One double-figure score for the Raiders in the first half. It was Clemens with 12. Both starting guards for Texas in double numbers. Tyler 17, including a pair of threes. Wrencher had 10. Dale for the three-pointer. That could have an awful lot to do with loosening Texas Tech up a little bit right now, and they get the ball back on the turnover by the Longhorns. Fenders has never lost to the Raiders, 8-0. First time Texas has been top seeded in this tournament in 14 years. They have never won the tournament. But they hope to put it into that tomorrow afternoon. 19 more minutes to take care of here in a 10 point lead. More on the scoop, and it's an eight point lead. And a good start to the second half of the Raiders. And after the basket, Moore made a good defensive play, coming back in, trying to pick off the inbounds pass. Cambridge off his own miss now eight points Cambridge missed that shot again that's because Clemens is literally laying a body on him I mean he's really getting physical with him inside Cambridge usually wins that battle but against Clemens well, he doesn't win all of them Cambridge limited in the first half because of foul trouble he has three that's the shot they have to hit. Austin has to take that shot. It's a good shot down along the baseline. He just has not been able to get it to go down. One for five shooting for Allen Austin so far. Texas trying to jump start Cambridge, and there's two in a row. He was as hot as any player in the country coming into this tournament. He had made 15 of 16 from the field over his last two games. And this followed Benford Williams is his first Cambridge something of a mystery though with only three of nine last night and uh, foul trouble of course clouding his first half performance tonight but he hasn't dominated the way he dominated most of the second half of the conference race well he's earned an awful lot of respect the defenses are keying on him people are dropping down there's two or three people there and the turnover giving it right back to the horns 52 40 texas Beck leads the all-time series, 
This is only the second time they've met in the conference tournament. And Tech won that one. Texas won that one, by the way, in 81, 66 to 58. This foul is Lance Hughes, second. First team foul of the half against Tech. A nine game winning streak in the series for the Horns coming into tonight. Turn around, Cambridge. Lemons really close to a foul that time. Reached in, almost got him. Comes up to help more. Feeds Lamont Dale. And Lamont Dale, very active underneath. He is a guy that could stand to touch the ball more this half. Yeah, he continues to battle. He's such a great competitor. Burdett actually had a block that time. Cambridge going to get that foul. Offensive foul as he backs in on Clemens, and that will be four. So Tom Penders, for the second straight night, having to do without his best player. Cambridge coming down the floor. Penders says that Clements is using that lower body. You saw there's a bit of an elbow right there. I don't know that it was an intentional one, but the official caught it and called the foul. I think Tom Penders thinks that Clements is using that lower body. That's something you, you want to do if you're playing inside defensively against post people is use your lower body. Don't use your upper body and push. Dale bringing Tech back with another three-pointer, 52-45. Tyler is fouled. Boy, Dale hurried back down on defense after the score. Yeah, Lonnie Dale's all over the place at the offensive end of the floor. He's driving. Or Lamont Dale it is. There he is. Dale up in the air, hitting the three-pointer. He just does a lot of things. Does not so very, very well, but nothing any better than the competitiveness that he brings to the floor. B.J. Tyler in the first half had four assists and now has the second highest single season assist total in Texas history. 215 this year. The record holder is Johnny Moore in 242 his senior year in 1979. Five of five at the line for Tyler and 19 points. But you know Texas went into the halftime locker room thinking about ending this in the first two or three minutes of this half, and one man has prevented it, and it's Lamont Dale. Ten points in less than three minutes to start this half. It's the Lamont Dale show. He's all over the place. This time he goes inside. Double pumps, uses the board well. What an arsenal of offensive weapons we're seeing from Dale. Dale one shot. Third Texas team foul, 16 points for Lamont Dale, who averages less than 11. All defensive performer in the conference. But as he shows tonight, has some offense from time to time. Texas has been unable to put Texas Tech away. Almost a zone look that time from the Red Raiders. With Hughes sagging so far off and paying a lot of attention to both Tyler and Wrencher. On nice the baseline, there's Williams. Yeah, that's a great pass inside. That's a fine interior pass. That was his own defense. That's an upset. James Dickey team playing a zone yeah, at any point. That's exactly right. He's got to do something to break that momentum that Texas had going into the locker room and coming out with that 13 point lead. A good call. Hughes for the three pointer. Not there. Williams the board. Texas Tech needs for Lance Hughes to help him. Wrencher. How many dunks have they had here? My goodness. Boy, it's easy to lose cow. This is about four or five of the highlight film variety. Benford Williams up the floor to Wrencher. You see he can go with either hand, left hand or right hand. There's a good look at it. Back to the pressure with a 10-point lead. And you cut it down, and then boom, they just go right back to 10. Raiders fed the hot hand. Dale missed. Lemons missed, and Burdett pulled it down. Texas looking to explode again. They've done it twice tonight. Beck has answered each time. But the game has always been under floor. Pender's control. We'll have a timeout with 15.59 to play in the game. 
Mickey and the Raiders still down by 10 here at Reunion. A nation's people are a nation's strength. And the strength of a bank called Nations Bank. A bank that now has the resources and the locations to reach one out of every four people in the nation. A bank that measures its success with the success of every community it serves. From Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that sees its strength in the neighborhoods of a nation would today be called Nations Bank. Come on. Hey, what do you want in a beer? Oh, come on. Do you want a great beer that's less filling? Well, come on. Then let me show you everything you want a beer to be. Cold Miller Lite, it's it. And back after that, come on. Austin knows the best in gentlemen's entertainment, beautiful women, gigantic screen TV, and free food buffet. Whether you're north or south, whether it's night or day, the Rose is the place to be. The Red or Yellow Rose. 58-48, Texas over Texas Tech. And the Penders family is always well represented. They're all here. In fact, Susie uh, has a son in addition to a husband over on the Texas sideline. Tom Jr. has uh, a freshman backup guard. He's had his moments. Texas backcourt, of course, triggered by Tyler with 19 points and six assists, and Wrencher chipping in 12 and one assist. Raycom is pleased to welcome our viewers tuning in on Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. Just over four minutes gone in the second half of our semifinal in Texas, led by 13 at the half. They've lost Cambridge to his fourth foul. Texas Tech has gone to his zone, as we mentioned earlier, coming out of the locker room with a defensive adjustment. Michael Richardson in touch pass Williams 11 points a great pass by Richardson he never came down took it right out of the air and got it inside immediately to Williams who made the spin move Fenders has remarked several times this year about how the same officiating crew can call two halves differently every little touch being called now this half that wasn't true in the first half and that one is Wrencher's third person fourth on the team Dale has the hot hand with 11 of his 17 in this second half Bryant Moore chipping in all four for him this half it's a nice move by Bryant Moore to get open for that shot he needs to do a little bit more of that it would really help this tech ball club at the offensive end of the floor Richardson rolls it off to Bedford Williams and much too much on the follow he was five for five before that miss. That coming off a 31% slump over the previous five games. Moore's three-pointer knocked out, still Red Raider ball. Did you see Will Clemens inside move the Texas people with his lower body once again when they went up in the air to get the rebound? They were only able to get a piece of it because of what Clemens did physically inside. Tim Black. Wrencher going out for Tony Watson. Tech gain by going from the man to the zone. Well, just to give him a different look, you're trying to break up any continuity at the offensive end of the floor that Texas had established playing against the man to man. You knew that Texas was going to be well prepared for a tough man to man defense. Allen Austin to the low post and Clemens both missing, and Burdett will capture the loose ball. They had pretty well prevented Texas running after misses when Texas runs is after steals. Williams tried the jump stop jumper got fouled on the way. Mont Dale's over there, but it's not going to be on him. It will be Bryant Moore's third. Dale also with three was close to picking up his fourth. More often than not, when Benford Williams gets moving with a basketball toward the basket like that, 
he will use that jump stop. He made an interesting comment before the game. He needs to remember to be a scorer and not a shooter. What's the difference? Well, shooters are guys normally that just uh, they like to shoot the ball outside. They're usually good free throw shooters. They're usually good jump shooters. Scorers can shoot the jump shot. They shoot free throws well, but they also are able to create opportunities for themselves. They drive with the ball. They get baskets in transition. I think Benford Williams is more of a scorer than he is a shooter. That doesn't mean he's not a shooter, but he gets more points in a variety of ways. Stacy Bailey in and rattles the 20-footer down. Nine for Bailey. Long pass, Richardson. Quick answer. And Michael Richardson coming up holding that left hand or wrist after landing with a 62-52 lead. And he's still wincing. Clemens outside. Lamont Dale fouled as Burdett went up for the block. You, you look at that Texas backcourt with Wrencher and Tyler. Those guys are foul shooters out. as well as scorers. The second to 15 foul. And Michael Richardson paying for the shot at the other end. Yeah, Tom Penders thought maybe the defensive man was sliding under. When he went down, he sort of fell on that wrist a little bit. You see Richardson going up right there where he was so impressive last night off the bench. And he's helping here again tonight. He's a talented player. And he fits right into Tom Pender's system. I mean, he, he, his capabilities, his talents. One more year for Michael Richardson, Lafayette, Louisiana product. This is it for Dale. This if Tech does not get an NIT invitation or they don't win this one and win tomorrow and get the automatic NCAA bid will be Dale's final collegiate game and he's going out in style so far. If this notwithstanding Tyler's miss on the jam and then Dale just blowing away Tony Watson for his fourth foul. He had no idea where Watson was I don't think because he had completely lost control of his body. Yeah, he was flying at Watson. Watson was going to make a move and never really did make the move. There's a great move. Speaking of moves, Tyler gets inside on a crossover dribble, misses the dunk. Now watch this. Look at Lamont Dale going at him. See, he committed. Looked like he was going to go off his feet, and he literally ran right into him and just decked him. He thought the three-pointer was coming, and he was going to launch at that one and go for the block and hope to have a breakaway at the other end. And instead, he's in trouble with four. And that one lost out of bounds. So Hughes to throw it in against the press. 62-52, 13-13 in the game. Brad Dale again off the tech bench. An important moment or two here without Clemens. He probably won't rest long, but he's out now. Off the foot of Bryant Moore. Texas forces so many turnovers, you can't afford very many unforced turnovers like that. There's the Metro Semi, Southern Miss, and UNC Charlotte in the second half are tight. And a turnover number 11 by Tech. Watson strip, Moore got it back. On the two on one, Bailey is hammered by Richardson. Yeah, but Richardson did a nice defensive job getting back. He challenged the ball, and he was still able to get back and defense the man. Watch the steal right here. That's Brian Moore, who steps in, gets a piece of the ball. He takes it. He gives it up over to Stacy Bailey. Bailey knows that Richardson is coming. He was looking for him, as a matter of fact. Double figures for Bailey, his 10th point. Point, but they're certainly not falling back and letting Texas roll to the victory. Making it work for everything. Tyler coughed it up to Allen Austin. It's not unlike the other two games. A five-point victory by Texas in Austin. A three-point win in Lubbock. Moore all the way in against Tyler. What a finish with a left hand for Brian Moore. That's a nice move. That's an outstanding move by Brian Moore that time. He just needs to be more consistent in his play. 
The lead is six, and Penders is going to get Wrencher back in. And this is happening with Will Flemons on the bench. He's getting some very valuable rest right now. Jump stop jumper. Richardson and count it off the glass. Any basket for a guy like Richardson could ignite a streak. Here he is right here. He operates against Stacy Bailey. You see Bailey committing the foul as Richardson goes up, but Richardson still with a presence of mind to shoot the ball, and he used the board well. Gets a chance now to convert it to a three-point play. Bailey fouled him. Michael Richardson, 18 points. He was 20 minutes last night. was 10 of 11 at the line. This is his second trip tonight. And he completes the three-point play. Timeout, 11.56 to go. Texas 65, Texas Tech 56 in Dallas. Pinstripe suits and high heel shoes. The daily grind gives them all the blues. Don't work me over, I know what works good. While the best thing go is so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a Dr. Pepper, we want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. The taste that's made to order. We love it. Yeah, I got your phone bill here and uh. Let me get this straight. When you got me to switch from AT&T, I gave you a list of my friends and my family, and I thought I'd save my calls to all of them. It, yeah, only now you're saying you couldn't get them all to switch. So after all that, I'm not saving on all the calls I thought I was going to save on. You know what? Get out of here. It's just not worth it. AT&T offers you savings, and you don't have to work for them. James Dickey wants to go home and talk a little uh, basketball. He doesn't have to look far. That's his wife, Betty Fiskus Dickey, the all-time Arkansas Lady Razorback scoring leader. What do you think? You think they talk basketball when they get home in the evening? How could they not? How could they not? I agree. Texas only twice this year has had more turnovers than they forced. They lost both those games to Pittsburgh and Rice, but a big edge in points off turnovers. Even though they haven't forced nearly the amount they usually do, and that's a credit to the ball handling of the Red Raiders. Dickey continuing to rest Flemons. 11.47 to go, 65-56 for the running horns. You got Lamont Dale over there, too, along with Will Flemons. And the foul along the baseline as they look inside at Benford Williams is his third. So Cambridge with four, Wrencher and Williams each three. If Tech can continue to get to the free throw line, the clock stops. They get an opportunity to cut into that lead a little bit. But every time they get down to five, six, seven points, Texas is able to take it back up to nine, ten, or eleven points. It's not unlike Texas. They've done that with frequency throughout the year. Seven for Lance Hughes, all newcomer in the Southwest Conference. He's a pretty good player right now, but he's going to be a real fine player before he's through at Texas Tech. Memphis State upset the call in the semis, and they trail Cincinnati in the finals there. Texas lead chopped to seven. Tyler taking it from Wrencher and back underneath to Burdett. I see Tyler beat his man and went. The defensive help side people have to come to him. That's when Burdett is so effective sliding the baseline. That's very good execution on the part of Texas. That's the way you draw it up. He was reluctant to shoot when he's had some chances today. Referring to the veterans. There's Austin with a bite. Nice back cut. Four points for Allen Austin. Back within seven. 67 to 60. 
Brilliant pass from Bryant Moore that time. Heads up pass. Texas Tech willing to do this, willing to let the Texas take a little time, but they got a defense, this offense, a little bit better. Tough shot for Tyler Wrencher working the offensive glass along with Burdett. And the tip in for the sophomore from Austin Lanier, making it 69 to 60. Second half of our semifinal in Dallas, and it's Texas 69 to 60, the top seed leading the fifth seeded Texas Tech Red Raiders. That's Terrence Wrencher with the basket waved off. The outstanding freshman from the Bronx, New York, drawing the foul. Dave Barnett, along with Bob Ortigal at Reunion Arena in Dallas. The winner of this game will meet the winner of the second semi between TCU and Houston right after this one. Will Clemens back in the ball game for Tech right now. And that's going to make a difference inside. They've been dominated a little bit on the board, especially the last trip down the floor. And Clemens will make a difference with its size and strength. Corey Lockridge for the first time off Texas bench to replace Burdett. And a nice hand for Burdett after an offensive burst over the last couple of minutes. Williams fouled after the inbound pass. Texas led by 13 at the half, 48 to 35. They only won by three and five points in the two regular season meetings between these two. Texas Tech 15 and 13 coming in, their first winning season in five years. Texas first top seed in the tournament in 14 years. And Texas trying to win this postseason classic in the Southwest Conference for the first time ever, hoping that if they can do that, it will really enhance their opportunity to get a higher seed in the NCAA tournament. Tech thinking NIT, but if they pull the upset tonight, they think NCAA, because the automatic grid will be decided tomorrow afternoon. 13 for Williams, 11 the lead. Freshman Chad Collins in. And beating the press nicely. Freshman Lance Hughes underneath, and the conference player of the year, Clemens, misses the lay-in. Raider fans howling for a whistle that was never blown. B.J. Tyler will be called for the offensive foul. Foul by B.J. Tyler. Now Dickey really letting Tony Stigliano have it about what happened to Flemings a minute ago at the other end. You see Lance Hughes right here. He gets it over to Will Flemings. Lockridge goes up, comes down all over Flemings. That does look like it's a foul. convinced it was. <laughs> he should be. I mean, I don't blame him for being upset. Well, he does finally have his man on the line. After Tyler's first foul, eighth against Texas. Tech has seven, so they're both in the bonus. And another double-double for Will Flemons, the 28th of his career. Brilliant already, and one more year to go on the South Plains. Under nine and a half minutes in the game. Back, back to the man defense after a brief look of zone, which lasted only two or three minutes. Lockridge fouled, the reach by Will Clemens. And as active as he is, that's his first foul. Yeah, he does a pretty good job of playing the game and staying out of foul trouble, but I believe he's tired right now. Look at him. And I don't think it's just this game here. I think it's the fact that at 11.45 last night, Texas Tech was still playing trying to get out of the quarterfinals to get the opportunity to play Texas here tomorrow. Lockridge to the line. This uh, is not where he is most comfortable, to say the least. He's 3 of 15 from the foul line this year. And, of course, swishes the first. <laughs> nice going, Coach. Lockridge. Keep helping him. He needs all that help. Sophomore who, who sat out two consecutive years, one for academics, and then uh, a red shirt year and one of two here to make it 72-60. We'll select the Southwest Airlines player of the game at the conclusion of the telecast. So stay with us and keep that in mind. 9.05 away. 72-60 Texas by 12. Freshman backcourt for Dickey. Collins and Hughes. Austin just a sophomore. 
Bailey, the only senior. That's still very patient against the 2 3. because they know he will not take the three-pointer. Contact underneath. On Lockridge. Yes, first. I think Will Clemens telling Stacy Bailey, you've got to give me the basketball inside. I want to operate against Lockridge. Lockridge at 6'10 has a three-inch advantage on Clemens, but Clemens at 225 has him by 30 pounds. That's why he wants to, to test what Lockridge can do in the low post. Exactly, and that's the way Fleming should be thinking. He wants the ball. He, he wants to get to the line. He feels like he can score, and he's telling his, his teammates, don't force it inside, but if I'm open, give it to me. Fourteen for Fleming. Really something to watch a, a freshman like Wrencher be the steadying influence on a, on a 22 game run, which he has been most of the year. Across the contact way before the foul. Wrencher's poise and his feel for the game and court awareness is second to none in the Southwest Conference. So much has been said about the fact that that he's one of the best freshmen in the country. You know, maybe he's the best. I think well, he's on a short list. I mean, yeah. who else? Who else would you think is he, in his category? He just does so many things and, and does them so well. I mean, he he's a heady player. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He makes big baskets. He really is capable of being a great collegiate player. It doesn't hurt him. The fact that he has a guy like B.J. Tyler alongside him in that guard for either. Bailey with the three-pointer. Second three tonight for Bailey. And the Raiders again hanging within single digits. And Austin strips Tyler. Chad Collins got in the way of Bailey. But that left Austin all alone. And it's 73-67. And here comes Peck again. If the, if the game has followed that pattern from beginning to this point. I mean, Texas builds a lead. Tech cuts into it. That's the same way the earlier two games in the year were played, decided by three and five points. Texas winning both. Warren spread it out and let Wrencher operate, and he missed it. Lockridge fouls Clemens. That's a young mistake right there. That's a lack of experience. That mistake by Lockridge, you can't go over the back, you can't reach over like that. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get called for a foul when you do that. As Lockridge goes back to the bench, Penders gets Cambridge back in, 7.26 to play, four fouls. But Cambridge back in there, along with Burdett and Williams, with the lead cut to six. It's dangerous, and we talked about this some last night. Texas, of course, setting its sights well past this tournament. They want to win it, but they want to go a lot further in the NCAA. And is there a danger when that's your mindset of pacing yourself through a conference tournament? I, I don't think there's any question about it. I think Texas has tried to pace themselves just a little bit. I believe that's why Tom Penners has played a lot of zone. And, and Tom's been here before. He's been here <laughs> repeatedly. He, he knows what he's doing. But Tech continues to hang around, and, and you give them enough of a smell, all of a sudden they think, hey, wait a minute, we got a shot at this thing. And then they end up playing better than maybe they have at any point in the ballgame. And pacing themselves is the last thing on their minds. They have trapped a 13-point lead to four. Because Southwest Airlines has so many daily flights, this is the kind of sophisticated equipment that helps keep us on schedule. So is this. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. At Southwest Airlines, we have the newest pure jet fleet in the airline industry. In fact, our fleet of Boeing 737s averages just six years of age, just like some of our favorite customers. Southwest Airlines, the youngest fleet in the air. Always excited. 
exciting or with something new. Always an adventure with something to do. Always entertaining, always something to see. Always on the money, Las Vegas. Always on the money, Las Vegas. By popular demand, for a short time, $3.99 continues. The $3.99 all you can eat, that is, of everything we've got. Like all your favorite entrees, vegetables, salads, and desserts. All you can eat for just $3.99 at lunch, $4.99 at dinner, and all day Saturday. But don't wait too long to dine. Our special price is for a limited time. That's why we call this all you can eat the short time $3.99. Only at Furs Cafeterias. Because it's here today and gone Texas Tech has as good a record as any team ever in this classic, and there's the reason why. Gerald Myers. Former head coach Gerald Myers, also an outstanding player at Texas Tech. I think he still holds a free throw record there. Been around a long time. It's nice that he's here. Hope he's enjoying the tournament. See that big broad smile. The guy that took his place right there, James Dickey, has done a great job this year. Southwest Conference Coach of the Year. Has his club right now within four of the University of Texas after being down by 13. And every time Texas looks like they're pulling away, the Red Raiders get jump started, and here they come back. There's the zone defense by Texas Tech. They probably played as much zone here in the second half as they played in any half all year long. Baron Brown making a rare appearance. Yep. Starter last year, junior from Lancaster, a little used this year. And Wrencher's three-pointer rebounded by Cambridge. Cambridge with the tap in. That was a risky play because he went over the top, and a lot of times you get a foul called no matter whether you make contact or not just by trying that play. You are right, my friend, and that was a great effort on the offensive glass. I think Clemens just hurt his foot. Let's hope that isn't related at all to some of the problems he's had in the past. Veterans out there for the Red Raiders. Brown started 21 games last year, played a total of 88 minutes this year. He was nagged by injuries. Interesting substitution by James Dickey, and I think a gutsy move. With the three-point look, right back, Moore all alone for three. And Lamont Dale with the board. They reset, 6-10 to play. Three-pointer would cut the lead in half. Didn't appear that Brown wanted to take that shot, did it? It did not. Well, that's not a surprise. Dickey had two freshmen at guard. Now he goes with the seniors. And the miss by Bailey. Here's Tyler. Brian Moore back. And he hooks Tyler in midair for his fourth. Team's 10th. And the Horns now shoot two on every foul. You see Bryant Moore Thanks, right there. Wrencher with a pass. He gets it out front to B.J. Tyler. Tyler down the floor. Bryant Moore commits the foul. He was all over the forearm of B.J. Tyler. B.J. quiet B. this half. 17 in the first half. 18 and 8 assists as he steps up here and strokes the first one. You notice that you frequently see a guy go from the beginning of the game to the end of the game and dominate the offensive end for Texas. The reason for that is they have so many offensive weapons, so many individuals that are capable of playing well. They have a lot of guys that have great halves. They get 12, 15 points. Last night it was a guy by the name of Richardson off the bench who had 18. They have four guys who have 20 and a half this year. Great finish by a great dunker, Hughes, 77-71. Nice job against the pressure. Looking in for Cambridge, bumping with Clemens. Clemens flopping, hoping to foul Cambridge out. Yeah, it, could, it could have been a foul, but the officials didn't go for the fact that Clemens went down. Raiders beat the press. Clemens will go for the three-point play, and that will be three on Burnett. The official says that Burnett was not there. Clemens with a basketball, pretty intent on going to the basket. There's the pass down the floor. Clemens handles it. Good hands. He gets in there. 
Oh, Burdett might have been there. Burdett might have had position. That's the last time down. A great bounce pass to Lance Hughes, who took the bounce pass, handled it well, and had a two-hand dunk. Now, Jim McDaniel being beckoned over to the scorer's table. And the question apparently involving whether the basket was counted or not, and the initial signal I thought was that it was counted. Scoreboard has uh, Flemings with 18. He would only have 18 if they counted that basket in the 14 rebound game. And it is a three point opportunity. And he gets it at 79 74. Going to have to do it at the defensive end of the floor. Tech's going to have to to really make sure they shut them down defensively. They extend a little bit, but they're still playing his own. There's Cambridge again. He has he has played his best with four fouls tonight. A couple big baskets inside. He had great tip on the offensive glass. Moore loses it to Cambridge. Yes. Cambridge coming alive. Timeout. Red Raiders. It's here. Domino's new, better tasting pizza. Melted cheese, big batter toppings, tender, tasty of crust. More melted cheese. Tender tasty of crust. From this day on, every Domino's pizza is going to be better than ever. Nobody knows. Like Domino's, how you like Tender, tastier crust. Try a medium with unlimited toppings, now just $9.99. Another's $4 more. What's most important to you? My wife. We've been married for 31 years. 32. Definitely these guys. What's most important? Jack, of course. My granddaughter, Susan. The new Ford Crown Victoria now offers anti-lock brakes with traction assist and dual airbags. Because shouldn't your car know what's important to you? Have you driven a Ford lately? There is a gasoline that is clearly advanced. A gasoline that will give you the highest level of engine cleaning for high performance. A gasoline formulated to clean fuel injectors and intake valves. Who has this gasoline? You know who. Phase 4 gasoline from Exxon. For cleaner engines and high performance. Eighty-three, seventy-four. Texas over Tech with 4.48 remaining. Today's game is brought to you by Exxon Gasoline. Four minutes and 48 seconds to play. Pender's getting Cambridge back in with four fouls. Has gotten Cambridge to play his best since being reinserted. He's got 12 points this half. Really showing the veteran savvy of avoiding fouling out but staying aggressive with the ball. And Tech in that zone defense. A good move by Penders and Cambridge. And certainly the other four people on the floor for Texas getting the ball down low to him. Getting it inside that zone. Hughes back in after being spelled briefly by Baron Brown. More back cut. Hughes can't get the lay in. Clemens can't get the follow. But Burdett loses it out of bounds. All these misses are huge at this point in the game. Texas Tech had a couple of good opportunities. There's one of them by Lance Hughes. There's a second one by Will Clemens. Neither one was able to go down. Texas not giving up many easy shots. Hughes will take the three. Wrencher skied and got fouled by Lamont Dale, who has fouled out. But a tremendous senior finale, if it is a finale for Dale. They will miss him. Lamont Dale is just 
one of the finest competitors in the Southwest Conference. He plays hard, night in and night out, plays both ends of the floor. He's physical. They will miss him right now in the last four minutes and 20 seconds. He's the kind of a guy you want on the floor when you're down by nine points, which could go to 11 if Wrencher makes these two free throws. Terrence Wrencher, two shots. Allen Austin replacing Dale. That is 14 for Terrence Wrencher. Southwest Conference freshman scoring record for one game, 37 points against Virginia Commonwealth and for the season. And a uh, limitless future, it looks like. Tech down by 10, 4 12 remaining. Lemons back out. Time to think more about threes, but Hughes went for the three point play the hard way. Got a very convincing up fake, doesn't he? Well, that's what you want to do. Yes, he does. And it's a smart thing. He needs to learn that while he's a young player. Get to that free throw line. He did a good job with the ball fake, and then he used the escape dribble well, and then he faked again. When he begins to complement his ability to shoot the ball outside with doing more of that, he's going to be a ton to handle from a defensive standpoint. You know, Texas fans have asked Tom Penders, here's a guy 30 miles away, why didn't recruit him? Would he be playing much with as deep a guard rotation as Texas has? He certainly would not be playing as, as much as he's playing at Tech. I mean, he's starting at Tech. He wouldn't be doing that at Texas, but... Uh, Tom Penders did make a statement that he said, I might have made a mistake. He said, you know, maybe we should have recruited Lance Hughes. And I, you know, I admire him for saying that. It's not like Tom Penders to avoid things. I mean, he, he, if he makes a mistake, I think he'll admit it. And he questioned himself a little bit about whether or not he should have recruited Hughes. But no, I do not think Hughes would be starting in Texas. Turn around, Dexter Cambridge. 14 second half points and 20 for the night. Ninth assist for B.J. Tyler, 86-76. Austin, too much off the glass, control by Burdett. And the horn smell a closing run. Got that look about him, they're gonna take care of it. Every possession, up 10. Wrencher, all the way. You see him fake the pass over to Cambridge that time. And the Red Raider upset hopes getting dimmer as we go under three minutes. Will Fleming yeah, won't stop. That's 21 for Fleming. 17th 20-point game of his junior year. Tech obviously back playing that man-to-man -man defense that they play so well. They played it extremely well last night. They had to to get by a good Rice Isle team. Semi delay. Texas with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Looking for the shot is Williams knocking it down. And the slump is over for Big Ben. He certainly has played better here tonight, and it's timely for the University of Texas because if he starts to play like he's capable of playing, combined with his teammates, Texas will be just that much better. Timeout with 2.23 remaining. It's Texas 90, Texas Tech 78. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. Ask them about quality. One of the reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer.
sang a happy tune most of the night, but with 2.23 to play, reality starting to set in. Texas has run off an 11 to 4 spurt over the last three minutes, and it's 90 to 78. Dave, you, you don't you, you don't sing a happy tune. You play a happy tune. You sing a happy song, don't you? Come on. <laughs> I will leave the semantics to you. Much much better hands. No 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 no. Good speaking of good, good hands. How about Will Flemings inside? Not over. If they can come up with a quick steal, they went for it. Baron Brown back in. Burdett capturing the loose ball and then drawing the foul in the Metro final in the semifinals for UNC Charlotte 76 72 over Southern Mississippi Brown a junior from Lancaster putting Albert Burdett on the line why do you think he can make what would be a pretty remarkable transition at this point from defensive specialty to offensive and defensive two way performer next year when Cambridge leaves. Well, I think he's, you know, we've seen him do that before uh, in a ball game earlier in the year against Georgia. He was very effective inside when Cambridge was on the bench and, and they went to Burdett a little bit. Uh, they go to Cambridge more than they go to Burdett. Burdett's role right now is, is to rebound, to be opposite Cambridge on the board so that if Cambridge misses, Burdett is there. But he has he has a pretty good shooting touch, and I think he'll be a, a fine offensive weapon next year. You'll see Tom Penders going into Burdett next year, just like he goes to Cambridge right now. Stacy Bailey all the way underneath. Stacy Bailey. They don't quit, do they? Nope. Neck continues to stay after it. In full court pressure now, looking for traps and rotating. Look out. Benford Williams would rather use time than. Look for the shot, and wisely so. Minute 24 to go. Tyler in the keep away, off to Burdett. Shot clock is at 20. Now Williams ready to go to work. 17 for Big Ben, 93-82. His average at one time this year, almost 19, and a steady drop since Cambridge came back. Cambridge feeding Williams. Will it ever come down? It will on Golden. You know, I wish he had just just let it go. See if gravity would have ever <laughs> no, <laughs> finally would, brought it down. No, never it, would have. It will lay there, and then it's a jump ball. But if he goes up and touches it, if it lays up there, it becomes a jump ball. Alternating possession. If you touch it. It's a violation. Your opponent gets it back. Quick foul is on uh, Will Flemons. Next game, about a half hour after this one is over, TCU and Houston. The winner will play the Longhorns, it would appear, at 1.30 tomorrow in the finals. That TCU-Houston game will be a war. It'll be extremely physical. They both played the defensive end very hard. In, in much different ways. TCU primarily a man-to-man -man defensive team, not primarily. They're 99, 9 tenths man-to-man -man defense. Can TCU keep Smith in the game? If Reggie Smith stays in the ball game, it'll be interesting. And do they need a win to get into the NCAA? It's not a speculation. Great record, but is it good enough to afford one more loss? Do they have to win the tournament to get in? Ryan Moore's three-pointer down to Burdett with 40 seconds. Showtime for B.J. Tyler. And Cambridge with two to cap it off. 96 to 82, the biggest lead of the night for the Longhorns. Three-pointer not there for Hughes. 17 seconds. Three-pointer Bailey. Uh, Howard sir and Bailey with 19 points giving the Red Raiders a chance to call their final timeout that's a good move by James Dickey he took the timeout plain and simply to stop the clock so that his people could get in position to go with full court pressure he never did talk to him just put him back out on the floor and if the team that calls the timeout wants to do that they have the option of doing so he didn't really want to talk to him. He didn't want to 
a delay the outcome of the game. It's pretty obvious Texas is going to win it. He just wanted to send a message. We're still going to compete. We're still going to go after the inbounds pass. I'll help you by taking the timeout. And the foul on Bailey. Well, this tech program is going to be nothing but interesting. They've got already a couple of key signees sacked away for next year. Lots of people coming back. Flemons will be a senior. Very bright future for James Dickey on the South Plains. And Pender starting to go deeper onto his bench. Here's Gerald Houston. A sophomore from Atlanta as Cambridge gets the curtain call. 23 points, most of which happened after his fourth foul. And a fan fine hand for Will Flemons, who comes out for the Red Raiders. 23 points, 17 rebounds for Will Flemons, and his ovation continues behind the Red Raider bench. He finally got a chance to show what he could do when healthy this year. Alan Austin in, now Tech deeper onto the, Texas deeper onto the bench, Lamont Hill in, Rob Garner in. DJ Tyler. Al Segova checking in. Tyler misses from the line for the first time tonight. 21 points. Now 22. That's second only to Cambridge's 23. And Pender's getting Tyler the curtain call as well. And his son Tommy Jr. will check in. Final seven seconds in Texas's semifinal victory. They will go to the finals for the second straight year. Brad Dale with the shot at the buzzer. But it's a Longhorn win, and they go to the finals against either. The TCU Horn Frogs or the Houston Cougars. Tom Penner's a big fan of the job that James Dickey has done at Texas Tech and congratulating him for a tremendous first year with that program. They finished 15 and 14, their first winning season in five years. More wins than they had in the last two years combined. And for the Horns, what a second half for Cambridge, fighting off the foul trouble to finish with 23 points and leading Texas to their 23rd win against only 10 losses. Their streak now at 11 of the last 12, and they are 11 and 2 since the return from NCAA mandated suspension of Dexter Cambridge. Standing by with Bob Ortigal, victorious head coach Tom Penders. Coach Penders, you're in the finals, my friend. Well, you know, that's what we came here for. You know, the kids were focused. Uh, you know, after our last game with AM last week, you know, they didn't celebrate or cut down any nets. They want to get to the final. They'd like to win this thing. It's hard to get to the final. It's such a balanced league, and Texas Tech did a great job tonight. We knew.